So I watched some videos fairly recently about HIV, and I thought it was really interesting. They talked about what it is, how it's treated, things like that. So I figured I'd talk about an interesting and possibly very deadly disease, hepatitis C. Let's get into it. So what is hepatitis C? The name hepatitis comes from Latin and Greek, hepatic or hepaticos, meaning liver, and itis meaning inflammation. So hepatitis means inflammation of the liver. The liver is pretty important because you only have one of them, unlike kidneys, and you absolutely can't live without it. It's connected to your stomach, so after food is melted by hydrochloric acid, it passes into your liver for further processing. Once this stuff reaches your liver, useful nutrients are extracted or converted from what we ate and stored in the liver for later use. It also renders harmful substances harmless or sends them on to the intestines to eventually be released from the body. Kidneys' job is to filter blood and they lead straight to the bladder, but they'll get my attention another day. Anyways, different substances affect different organs, so if you have liver problems, you're going to want to take NSAIDs like ibuprofen because they're absorbed so much that negligible amounts reach the liver. NSAID drugs are usually considered liver safe. Tylenol, on the other hand, is not liver safe. So hepatitis C is a virus, not a bacteria, which means antibiotics can't cure it. Viruses are very difficult to cure right now. What is a virus? If you take a look, here's what a virus phage looks like. It's like a single virus entity. The top part contains the DNA, and the bottom portion is how it acts on the body. At some point in the future, I'll address vaccines and how they aren't causing autism, but that isn't this video. For now, I'll just point out that a vaccine is made by cutting the bottom part of the virus off, creating what's called a truncated virus, and just injecting that inactive virus DNA into a person. It can't do any harm, and the body can create its own defenses against the virus once it detects it and learns how it works. That's how they make the hepatitis B vaccine. Another way of doing it is by inactivating the virus, basically killing it so it can't reproduce, and injecting it into the person. That's how they make the hepatitis A vaccine. What's even more fascinating about this procedure is the fact that there's a big question mark surrounding the question, are viruses alive? It really depends on how you define life. If you want to say, it's alive if it reproduces, that's fine, but fire reproduces by the strictest definition. So is fire alive too? The best working definition of life we've got is, does it evolve in a Darwinian fashion? Even that has its flaws, but we'll go with it for now. Even more interesting is the fact that humans share 5 to 8% of our DNA with viruses. Low estimates are around 1%, but we definitely do share DNA with viruses, which is amazing to me. Moving on, as of the making of this video, there is no hepatitis C vaccine. Despite our attempts, we've been unable to make one. There are some in trials right now, but as far as I know, none of them have made it to market yet. So we've been pouring money into curing it. And yes, it is curable. But up until very recently, the drug cocktail used to cure it was very hit and miss. 15% of the population will spontaneously fight the virus off themselves with no need for treatment, might not even know they ever had it. 40% of the people treated with the old drugs would be cured of it. The quickest and easiest way to tell if you have hepatitis C is by checking your white blood cell count. If it's elevated, it means something's going on and it's very possible you have hepatitis C. The doctor will take more blood samples and send them to a lab to test for the virus itself and they'll get back a viral load. That's basically how much hepatitis C genetic material is in the blood sample. So as I was saying, the old treatment for hepatitis C would see 40% of the patients to a viral load of zero, which means they're completely cured and they can stop taking treatment after that. They aren't contagious and the damage being done will cease. However, they can recontract. So commonly before patients are treated, they'll do everything they can to ensure the user isn't at risk of recontracting because there's no guarantee the medication will work a second time. They want to make sure they're off the drugs or however it was contracted in the first place. If the viral load went down within the first six weeks of treatment, they'd know that it was working and they were within the 40% of patients for whom treatment would work. Treatment consisted of ribavirin pills multiple times per day and a weekly injection of peg related interferon called PEG interferon. Eventually, in April of 2011, a new drug called Teleprevir came to market and it was given to hepatitis C patients with genotype 1, which is a particularly aggressive genotype, and it was taken in tandem with the ribavirin and the interferon. That raised treatment success rates from 40% to 80%, but when they came out, the pills cost about $240 per day. Two pills were taken three times daily for a total of six pills per day at $40 per pill. In 2011, when the 
new drug went to market, treatment lasted about six months, and cost about $115,000. The drugs would also make the patient feel very sick, much like chemotherapy. Hair loss was a common symptom of the treatment, but it didn't happen to everybody. Without treatment, the virus will slowly eat away at the liver. The liver has the unique ability to regenerate itself as long as there isn't any scarring. Scarring on the liver is called cirrhosis, and in hepatitis C patients, that will happen eventually. It takes 10 or 20 years, but if left to its own devices, or if treatment didn't work, it can also cause liver cancer. In fact, hepatitis C is the number one cause of liver cancer and transplants. Full liver transplants aren't exactly easy, but lobes of the liver can be donated to prolong life. Some health insurance companies in the US won't agree to pay for treatment until damage has been done to the liver, which can be determined through density tests to see how fatty the liver has become, or if the patient has cirrhosis. As of this video's release, there is a better, more efficient treatment that has a much higher rate of success. Treatment time is a lot shorter than it has been in the past, dropping from 6 to 12 months to 12 weeks, which is really good. But it still costs about the same as it has, around $85,000 to $95,000 for the latest treatment, which is a pill called Maverett, a combination of two drugs called Glecoprevir and Pibrintasvir, and it works on genotypes 1 through 6. It works on patients who have little or no cirrhosis. The drug itself doesn't actually cost the drug companies what they're charging, but they feel that the price is justified because of how much treatment costs up to now. But the cure rate is way higher with this drug than it used to be, so it's a win for society either way. It's just that insurance companies want to wait until the last possible second before paying for treatment, for some reason. Anyways, getting off on a little tangent there. One final thing I wanted to talk about. How is it contracted? Blood-to-blood -blood contact is by far the most common way. Sharing needles or sharing a razor with somebody are good ways of contracting the disease. It has to be blood-to-blood -blood, though. It's genuinely difficult to contract in normal, everyday activities. So if a single family member has it, sometimes they won't even bother testing other family members. It isn't like HIV, which can be contracted through basically any bodily fluid except saliva. The only bodily fluid that carries hepatitis C is blood, and that has to make contact with the other person's bloodstream through cuts while shaving or something. It can be transmitted through sex, but like I said, it pretty much has to be blood-to-blood -blood contact. It's possible, but the rate of sexual transmission is about 6% over a lifetime, so not very common. Wear a condom anyways, it's for the best. Also, it can be passed from a mother to a child during childbirth, but that isn't terribly common either. Okay, that's all I've got for you guys. Follow me on Discord, Patreon, and all social media. Thanks for watching, guys.